from Africa to Kenya. USA Minnesota. Europe and around the globe. You are watching CFI RLM TV. Kingdom Age. Beg your pardon Meanwhile nations shaking Like they're grown in Harlem RLM soldiers manifest in Jerusalem Truth anyhow, the gospel go blah blah We lost our way chasing approval and title And kill the helpless without using the rifle While they gamble with the future like dice boys in Harlem A bride's being adored, they call the holy Jerusalem, yeah Concerning circumcision, I suggest that it's vital, yeah To be free from legislations of religious people, yeah Your capacity to conduct Messiah of Israel Israel has suffered underestimation He was killed to issue lost souls Conciliation but Conciliation 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 You're applying them at work, and so good job, Buckwheat. It's going good. Yeah, the Lamb on the throne, which is our source of light. If you read the New Testament, it says, We are the children of light, walk in the light. What does it mean to be a child of Shekinah, a child of glory? It means someone who's connected to the Messiah, the Mashiach, inside their own stomach. Okay, so there's a mystery, and this is not widely known even in Christianity, that the Shekinah of the Messiah, like the apostles say in the New Testament, is in your spiritual stomach. So the most important thing you can do tonight is connect your senses of your nefesh soul that's in the blood, Leviticus 17, 11, the flesh has a soul that is in the blood. So your redemption is in connecting your nefesh soul 
to the Shekinah glory of Jesus Christ, the Lamb. Now, why is he called the Lamb? The source of light is the Lamb because the nefesh will need to be continuously forgiven. The mind, will, and emotions that are in the human blood is the sinful nature, the impulse of the flesh, and all the influence of hell constantly that can be conquered. The good news of the glad message of the glory of the Father, 1 Timothy 1.11, is that you can conquer the nature of the flesh and the human nature that you don't have to remain sinful human beings, religious human beings, rebellious human beings in any way, shape, and form. The entire purpose of Christianity, it says in the Apostles' writings, is to have Christ the Messiah fully formed in you. In order to be formed in you, the brain, the nefesh soul, has to submit and obey Christ in you, has to begin to obey the glory. So a child of light is someone who's born again, but not just born again, because if you think of it this way, well, Esau was born out of the same womb as Jacob. So in a way that symbolizes being born again, but yet rejecting the inheritance and becoming a son of Satan. So this is what we do with sheep and goats in the end times. That's what Jesus Christ said in the Gospels. At the end times, I will separate the goats to my left, which is Esau, Christians that have rejected their cosmic heavenly inheritance, and to my right, the sheep, which is Jacob, Israel, that embrace and receive and merit the rewards. So we read in the New Testament, we're saved by grace. But now we need to understand something that's really not known. You're rewarded by merit. That's the last words of Jesus Christ in Revelation 22. That I'm coming to give to each one according to what they've merited. So we have a lot of unmerited stuff around here because we're in diaper Christianity. But Jesus Christ said in the red letters, all of the inheritance and the rewards you will merit. You know what that means? Glory to glory is merited. Truth, anyhow. Someone say, going from glory to glory is merited. Salvation, the initial rebirth, is unmerited. That's what the Bible says. But the reward system is all based on merit. It's based on what you do with the unmerited grace. When that grace, undeserved grace, undeserved favor comes down, he wants to see and just look is looking to see, you know, on the earth, his eyes ranging throughout the earth. Who is going to use that grace? And for what purpose? Are you going to ignore the grace? Are you going to use it for selfish reasons? Using it for witchcraft? Using it for fake versions of Christianity? Demonic doctrines? Uh, Self-promotion in the form of, you know, using miracles or healing signs and wonders in tandem with, with the demonic? You know, there are demons that do miracles. And we understand that from the... Uh, fire burning out of my forehead on that one. The Holy Spirit is really zealous for that. Because if you understand the seven halls of hell, the upper layers of the seven halls of hell have the higher ranking demons. Those are the ones that are usually um, going to be working with or being over the kings of the earth. As far as kings, rulers, uh, wickedness in high places. You know, the wicked rulers of this perverse generation who rule countries, who rule, you know, nations whether secretly publicly or privately a lot of those are the highest hall of hell and they deal with uh, things over the earth and in the earth but just at the highest level they don't they're not usually dealing with uh the demons that are over your local church congregation you know hell is very organized they are in a sense they're very chaotic and disorganized but they do have an organization structure and it is a lot of paperwork, and it's a lot of accusation, uh, and it's a lot of fear and intimidation. It's the worst job you could ever ever hope for. And you got to understand, these angels are so dumb. These fallen angels, they're so dumb that literally, when Lucifer said he was going to be better than God, they believed him, and they followed him right out of heaven, down the cosmic toilet, shot down like lightning. You know, it was like one giant flush, like, get him out of here. So, any one of the angels who had the audacity and who were dumb enough to believe Lucifer was actually stronger than God went with him. So, whoop-de-doo, we lost, you know, a third of the angels. 
wasn't any of the smart ones. <laughs> that's kind of a joke. It's like, you know, that's, it's, a, it's a sad thing that they Old fell, jokes. but yeah, yeah, it's just how he created you. So anyway, God did not create any evil in the world. God did not make things wicked. You know, that's Satan chose that. Isn't that wild that spirits even had free will? What yeah. Are, what an amazing what are you gonna do with freedom it? our father provides for even angels. It's incredible. I think understanding the merit system of the new covenant, which is going into maturity, going into the cosmic dimension, is so crucial in these days. What does it mean to earn the different rungs and the ranks that the Bible teaches? Going from glory to glory is merited. Okay, this is not dead works. We have a lot of uh, teaching against dead works. We curse dead works. We don't want to be participating with any dead works, okay? But the living works, which the Bible says, greater works will you do because I'm going to the Father, John 14, 12. These greater works are actually using your body for the will of Jesus, okay? Apostle Paul says, everyone will be judged according to what they've done in their bodies, okay? which means using your body for good works is how you merit the reward system of the new covenant. Revelation 22, I'm coming to give each one the rewards according to what they've done in the flesh. That means be at your position. Like right now when we're at our post, we're broadcasting live. Doesn't this feel the best? Like some of the best feelings and you know, we go glory to glory, but some of the best feelings is when we're just doing our job, being where we're supposed to be, doing what we're supposed to do. And so when you find out what that is for your life, here's the thing. You can't copy and paste, right? You are not going to be copy paste culture. What does that mean? When you see someone at their post doing what they're supposed to be doing, where God placed them, you can't just go and do what they're doing and say it's going to work for you. That's copy paste. Why didn't it work for me? Okay. Oh, I need to do that. You know, listen, you need to find out what God created you to do and you need to find out where he wants you to be what he wants you to be doing and then go and do that and of course you have your angelic downtime you've got your um, bible torah study reading time you've got your recreational time you've got your you know your passion your job a lot of times if you're following the lord your job is going to have to do with your passion or with your personal self-development which means uh, glorious irritations to your fallen nature so that it can irritate it like a sandpaper and that it'll come up to the surface and come out. For some of you, it's not necessarily that you're getting worse. It's just, it's always really been there under the surface and the job that you're at is meant to bring it to the surface so that you can see, hey, that's actually been in there dormant. That's the sinful nature. It needs to come out. So don't just despair and say like, what did I didn't so know? So many people have told me over the years, it's like, I'm doing worse than I used to. No, you're not. It's just revealing what's been in you the whole time. Exactly. The greater light reveals that the human heart is wicked beyond knowing. So you're just coming into the beyond knowing of how wicked you were previously because you thought you were better than you actually were because you were exactly. totally deceived. That is like 100% of everyone that comes like from the glory uh, into the glory or even from the glory into the cosmos. The glory it's, reveals the darkness. Mm -hmm. So that part kind of sucks a little bit, but only for the human nature, and then it can die. And then you can rest in that Christ is perfect, yes. and it's him being formed in you. You need a savior. <laughs> it, we realize progressively how much more we actually need Jesus because we were self-dependent in our Christianity, which is immaturity and infancy, which is a lack of circumcision. The mm -hmm. foreskin is self, but the circumcision is Mashiach the source of light that we may walk in the light. What does it mean to be a child of light? It means to be circumcised of the foreskin of the heart, which is the self nature, self willed attitude, your selfish emotions, your feelings, your selfish will, your brain, your selfish thoughts, all of that obliterated for the thoughts of Jesus, which is the glory of God. Amen. That's so good. So just take peace in that God is doing a great work in you. Don't go into fear. Don't go into despair. Understand that some of those things are going to be irritated. And if God has allowed you to see something in you that ain't supposed to be there, thank him for letting that be exposed and let it be swiftly removed and cut out. How? By the circumcision of the word of God in your life. Again, it's something that we meet God halfway. He, God always does his part. He's asking us to do our part. And so when you come to the end of yourself, it's the realization that you have that in you. 
and no matter how hard you try, you're not really able to get rid of it yourself. Then you finally cave in. You finally give give in to the Lord and you say, you know what, God, I need you. And then when he sees the surrender, the tender surrender of a broken and contrite spirit, that humility, he just kind of, and then there it goes. And it just gets whacked right off of you. And it feels so good. <laughs> well, I think one of the greatest misunderstandings in Christianity is the Holy Spirit sent to make you look good. That's wrong. The Holy Spirit sent to make Jesus look good and you look bad. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit sent forth to convict of righteousness, sin, and judgment. Which means the evidence that the Holy Spirit's in your life is that he's revealing the sin in your heart, the sin in your brain, and the sin in your blood for Jesus, who is sin-free, to be formed in you progressively. Amen. And, you know, I was going through uh, Pigs in the Parlor this week and just revisiting that whole teaching because I strongly believe in this day and hour that the Lord wants to deliver people. And that's, you know, whew, there's, a, there's a lot of promises in this ministry about deliverance and uh, delivering uh, nations, delivering people, delivering them, you know, on, on a public stage. And so the Lord wants en masse deliverance and freedom and for you to walk in freedom. But it wa he wants it to be a sustainable way so as we we're going through this i noticed uh was one of the holy ghost highlights was oftentimes the people getting delivered uh, in the examples they were shocked to realize that it was a demon and wasn't them their identity was often wrapped up in the demon to where when they realized that that was a demon they would say things and this was like many 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 people Again and again, they would say, oh, I thought that was me. <laughs> that ain't you. So understand, when that condemnation and that uh, fear of hellfire comes upon the emotions, when it, you're dealing with sin, being convicted and confronted about you know different sin patterns, there's an emotion that belongs to the demon. And most people don't really know that that's the demon. Yeah, the demon's feelings get hurt and then... The, the demon, his influence, his tentacles, are in, inside the sinful nature of the foreskins of the soul, and we take it personally. But only the devil took it personally. A circumcised person is never hurt by hurting demons. Only right. the uncircumcised. Because Edom is literally citizenship as human beings mm. with the demons. This is the rhema word for this season, Obadiah 121, and the deliverers. Mm -hmm. Which means you got to be delivered to a measure, a great measure, to be a deliverer. Shall go up on Mount Zion, which is sheep, to rule and judge Mount Esau, which is goats. Notice the Bible says the goats have a mountain. That's the seven mountains of Revelation. <laughs> and the sheep have a mountain. Two different governments. The government of Esau and the government of of Jacob, and you can guess which one the nation's governments are right now. That's all Esau, hundred percent Esau, and every right, nation on the right because they're the ones who are authorizing the um, the uh, what do you call it, the temp temple of Satan to have their effigies and things like that in public spaces uh, and places of like law and you know like capitals, capital buildings. That it's government deal government. Uh, agencies dealing with money and I think you probably can see in the spirit who I'm talking about uh, they uh, they're the ones who approved the temple of Satan to be able to have that status so that they can be all around the public the places IRS. yeah exactly there you go he's gonna go right for it yeah I think there was a you know people are you know on the outer courts of Christianity are f getting fed up with it and they're going and tearing down some of the um, some of the uh, statues and they're like they i think they had a holiday display and he went and vandalized it it's like you know good for you but these wicked <laughs> governmental organizations of esau are establishing temples to satan in the united states of america like right come now. on who do you Literally. think who so who do you think <laughs> your your money is going to you know so so yeah esau is the temple of satan the heaven out of you for the building of mount esau now Listen, you're always going to have government. It's not that we're anti-government. We're not anarchists. We're monarchists of Jesus Christ, the King of Glory. Yeah, he's literally going to physically come back and take over. And he's going to make things exactly the way he wants them. And then, uh, you know, so we're going to have a work in this before he comes back and does this. So a lot of things are going to have to happen before Jesus comes back. It has to be to a certain level. 
when he comes back, he's going to make a lot of changes. We're going to do the best that we can, but he's, he's going to make a lot of changes because he's the perfect ruling king. Our goal, basically, for the next thousand years, at least, or more, however long it takes, is to get it as close to exactly how Jesus wants it, that he would do it himself, so that he has as little work to do as possible when he comes back. That it can just be, like, pretty good, but let me show you how I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then, and then uh, he's going to give it to the Father, and the Father is just going to be living, literally, with mankind, and it's going to be like heaven on earth. That's the marriage of the realms, which is what we're going to be uh, taking a look into how that can happen first within you before it happens in the external realm. Because doesn't that sound way better than having, like, temples of Satan taxing the crap out of you? And just every year, make you know, can you imagine the manifest throne of the father he's probably gonna charge you more no, I'm just kidding. here's what we're gonna do we're gonna obliterate the government of you. esau off of all your heads and hearts and bloodlines and houses and businesses but you have to embrace and obey the government of jacob the government yeah. of israel otherwise by default you will be under the government of esau there's only two kingdoms and they're esau goats and they're jacob sheep and this time is the revealing of the government of Jacob and his sheep, which is Jesus Christ's kingship. His first coming was like a Passover lamb or a passive lamb. His second coming is like a devouring lion, which is the kingship nature of glory. So all our revealing, the revealing of the sons of God, is the revealing of the kingship nature of Jesus Christ. That's why when people often want just a, a Passover lamb, which is a little cuddly bunny rabbit they're offended because his whole second coming is coming as a king you feel the teeth on your heart you know it's like ow 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 you know just just you know go with it but you know i'm so excited i'm just thinking about the father ruling and reigning in his time after you know jesus comes back and finishes everything i think i was just my, the one thing the first thing that came to mind for me after like you know the throne and no day or night it's just a glory light lit up you know the whole earth you'll be able to see end to end just you know how they used to see is there won't be any potholes in minnesota hallelujah we've been waiting for this day <laughs> but don't be surprised when he asked for it to be paved in in gold and that's going to be a little bit more than the regular county Incredible budget faith. Incredible. streets of gold not such great faith as i've seen in all christianity i know it's going to happen there'd be no potholes in minneapolis you ought to be able to have a nice car i mean that's a greater sign and wonder than raising the dead i believe it kind of is a lot of dead racings happen but they still have potholes in minnesota Holy Ghost. Amen. Anyway, we love you guys. If you're tuning Deliverance in from Minnesota, God bless Minnesota. And if you're dealing with those potholes, just remember, someday it'll be streets of gold. I heard of pigs in the parlor, but it's mostly pigs in the potholes. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Amen. I know it's true. I know. You know, it's worth just loaning a car just because the potholes are so bad because you know it's going to just get shredded driving right? it around. That way it doesn't uh, break your heart every time you hit one <laughs> of those. Turn like, that uh, thing back in. It's been through the moon craters uh, for the three years. Right, right. Well, that brings us to Marriage with the Realms, I think. Let's take a look. We wanted to look at multiverse orbitals today. And we have been talking about Marriage of the Realms. We're talking about the menorah lamp. It is within you. So the pattern that you're made in, in your invisible man, is in the image of God. So he's restoring you to that image. Uh, there's another mystery there about the uh, tefillin, where they bind the word of God to the left arm. We know that means Gevra, the heart portal. And then to the head, that's, you know, the covering over Da'at to make sure that's sealed away. But that tefillin is basically the... Uh, recreating you in his image the new creation i'm a new creation you're a new creature in christ jesus when what when you're born again that's that little gingerbread man of light come back alive like you were you know before you were born when you were with the father inside the father in heaven and so now you are in that vessel of flesh which is what this animal sacrifice because the flesh that bears the animal images be birds beasts reptiles the sinful nature the dust of the earth serpent food is dust right so you want to burn it up on the altar and that's that menorah lamp on the inside is that light of the temple on the inside and it represents the seven spirits of god and as we know now your seven souls as you rise and you acquire more souls god gives you a new heart he gives you a new stone with a new name on it that only you and him understand unless you decide to share it with others and i've told some of you 
on here, uh, you know, my new name, we get a new one at the top of Adam Kadmon. It's a Hebrew name and you'll have many names, right? You get many new names in Christ, but that's specifically a special one for circumcision. And I think you wanted to say something on the menorah. Yeah, the menorah is what closes the gates of hell. Now, this is a mystery, very powerful understanding of how the universe works. The gates of hell are prim primarily two gates only. One in the head that corresponds to Pluto and one in the left arm that corresponds to Mars. So you actually do have planetary systems that shoot demonic light into the impulse of the flesh through, the, through Pluto from the bone throne of Satan that is on the planet Pluto or the pseudo planet Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, Lady Gaga is named after one of the moons. Yeah. That's why Gaga she that's where she pulls demonic power from for her that's songs. Right. So it's all black Kabbalah versus righteousness, which is the planetary systems oper operating in their orbit around Jesus Christ. That's why it's written you have cosmic garments and come up here. Those are all verses about coming out of the earthly, which means no planetary power are no power, no zodiacal power, which is the zodiacs written in scripture many, many times. God created the zodiac for seasons. The heavens are for times and seasons. It is written signs in the heavens and wonders on the earth. It is written. So we need to have an accurate understanding from the Bible and the oral tradition of Moses and the oral tradition of the apostles of the Lamb of the heavens. Otherwise, in ignorance, we'll just live under any old heavens, which usually isn't the heaven of heavens it's usually the heavens of hell as it's written the principalities powers thrones and dominions are seated where in heavenly places ephesians 6 that is written so we need to go into the heavenly places by, by the leadership of the apostles and the prophets of the lord jesus christ if you go outside of the government of israel and you just listen to the apostles and you think you can become a lone ranger out here they will take you out and possess you so quickly to make your head spin like Elijah's whirlwind. We need to be in rank and authority like the holy angels, rung upon rung. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves in Esau's kingdom wondering why these things are happening to me. It's because you're disobedient to the government of Israel. Therefore, you put yourselves under the government of right. Esau. Right. You will love one <laughs> and hate the other. You, so you'll serve one. You'll hate the other one. You'll love one. So you, you got to pick. You got to pick and choose. And usually it comes down to money. That's why we talk about money is because you cannot serve God and mammon. So if you're going after greed and lust and things like that, that's still working in the heart and you tend to go after that. You find yourself, you know, running away to the other mountain range and then wonder why things go wrong. You got to stay inside the city of peace, inside the city of Jerusalem. So just understand God's doing a deep and thorough work in you. This cosmic walk up the Sephra, it deals with all the crap. It deals with all the stuff that people don't like to deal with, don't like to talk about, don't like to acknowledge it's in there. Let's just not talk about it. But it's in there and it ain't nice. It's nasty stuff. But guess what? You're dealing with 6,000 years plus of unrighteousness <laughs> in the circum uncircumcision all your bloodlines, all the fall of the curse since Adam and Eve, and you're going to deal with it in your own flesh and blood, in your own spirit. It's so easy for the Holy Spirit as it's written. All things are easy for God. Nothing is hard for the Holy Spirit. You need to understand that he's God. There isn't an angel that intimidates the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. It's impossible. Yep. The Holy Spirit created all the angels, mm -hmm. and all the angels are subject to the Holy Spirit. But you need to understand in wisdom, the Holy Spirit is holy speech, which means if you are in the holy speech of the living, breathing, fiery tongues of the word of God, Jesus Christ, it's easy dealing with the enemy because you're yep. in right standing with God's glory. Yep. So watch your mouth at work. You know, understand the temptation to say those things just to get along with people, just to have false love, just to feel welcomed and accepted. And, uh -uh, you know, like, get that out of here because... You're going to regret that when the enemy shows up. You're going to want to have had to already have had pure speech. So I'm mentioning workplaces because a lot of you get tempted at work into false love, into complaining, uh, complacency, dissatisfaction or where, where God has you to grow. Look, some of you, it's, you know, if you're feeling stuck at a place in life, number one, it's not God's fault. Okay. 
let's just clear that anything you have going on in your life you know you don't like your situation in life it's number one it's not god's fault so who else does that leave that's just the satans and you right so it's definitely not god's fault so that's in those two camps the, the enemy comes to tempt but we find it's usually our fault and you know so there there needs to be forgiveness and grace but also a change so wherever there's a stagnancy let there be a change so just soften the heart because if there's like a um a blockage at your gate right a stubbornness a pride that doesn't want to admit fault for anything just kind of get over that and understand that if you're willing to accept the yoke of heaven not the yoke of hell the yoke of heaven when you humble yourself to his nature he's lowly his ways are meek and he's gentle and meek in heart and his ways are easier his ways are easy um, it's only hard with the pride kind of thing like you know so just admitting fault and then asking for the mercy and the grace of the blood of Jesus so that now you can change you don't really need all the approval of man around you at your workplace you can just be you don't have to like push your holiness out on people it radiates on its own essentially you're coming out of poverty of light a lot of you you're coming out of poverty of light so good because when you have poverty of light it's not a brightness brightness automatically dispels the darkness a greater light will always automatically dispel the greater darkness so you know the greater the level the greater the devil what does that mean that means sacrifice more of the foreskin and the membrane that steals the light has the appearance of light it's not really if you settle for false light you are in poverty of light and that steals your finances so if finances in your life ever go down i want the very first thing you look for to be where have i engaged and sinned in false love that i'm not catching because of my own pride and what i think is acceptable the higher angelic way is the higher you go up the more strict it is so it gets to the point in the higher rungs you can't even certain thoughts open the door to the enemy whereas when you're lower in the world there's more grace because no one's at that level a standard of, of righteousness the higher you go the more you actually have to change and it's actually expected of you right like if no one in heaven thinks like that as you start approaching you what, it's always more fun yeah as you start approaching that you uh, it becomes very obvious that how you are even if you, you might be really radiant shining and just you've hit all the requirements of the seventh world and you're blazing and everything would be fine if you were in the seventh world the tenth world is not like that you can't actually there's that great there's a grace that lifts off and measures to where you can't think a certain way anymore otherwise you have instant repercussions you instantly um you might get hurt by things uh you might open the door the enemy can attack you and do harm so you learn really quickly to stay on the inside and even though you've done that six one world half a world one rung <laughs> you know three rungs five worlds seven worlds eight worlds nine worlds it always increases what's expected of you you have to bear more fruit there has to be more change you can't remain the same as you were on the last rung you have to change and so understanding as you're ascending more is required of you but there's grace for it but the grace to be how you were before is totally gone you can't act like that anymore otherwise you know what happened i'm like the same i was you, you'll find that going up am i not at the standard of righteousness well you know what come on buckwheat more is expected of you at this level nobody in heaven thinks like that so you actually have to stop thinking like that that nature can't exist and you don't move forward to the next rung until it's completely removed and then you're passed a test to make sure it's something you don't desire anymore you kill that and then you go on to the next one so it is a systematic annihilation of you and me which is the only thing remaining is going to be christ and him crucified within us amen yeah, that's hebrews 1 3 jesus christ in you is the exact outrain brilliance of the light being amplified classic 
which means fullness of glory with no darkness at all. Why? Because God's in you. It is written. Amen. Amen. So always stay humble, no matter how much you overcome, and just know that it's Him in you. And you're going to be married to God. This path is the path of union with Him. So type in the comments, make a declaration. I'm going to the next level of glory. I'm going to the next level of glory. I am going to the next level of glory. My mm-hmm. sin, demons, uh, confusion, the world is not mm-hmm. going to stop me. The next level of glory is awaiting you. Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do in 2024? We're going to go from glory to glory. Amen. Amen. So no, the next time you go to work at your job or whether, you know, you work at home, maybe you're a housewife or a house husband, right? You know, the way of the house husband. And uh, which is, that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, understand it's never just like a day at work that day at work is the testing ground to run the new program that you hopefully downloaded the software that morning or the night before in the word of god what does that mean uh, making allegorical speech in relation to technology but you are living breathing organic tech angelic tech god created you like he made you without god you didn't actually exist so How's that? <laughs> yeah, some fascinating. Yeah. You, you are a- angelic technology. Blood mm-hmm. is angelic technology. All of the debugging program that you need is in the word of God and in the wisdom of righteousness and the wisdom of Moses. So the wisdom of Torah, the full Torah, including the parts that flew away. We need that part. We need what Jesus brought. And when you put it into your senses and when you go into heaven, right? You feed it on the word of God. That's basically like running your debugging program or you're running the software update. So all your system updates, hardware and software, we're interested in the hardware. But if you get the new, if you had the new body, but without the um, software to run it, it wouldn't run. It wouldn't work. Right. So certain models of computers are capable of running the latest software. If you have like a super old computer, it's not even compatible. Like a quantum computer running on DOS. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Before we even had Windows. Oh, man. That's rough. So we need the hardware upgrades. We need the software upgrades. But it's by being renewed in your mind by the word of God. So remember your little um, gingerbread light man inside of you? When you're born again, and that's the inner man of light. You're born, born, how did Bob Jones say it? Born again of the God's... God, sperm, seed, genetics, you know, your father in heaven. That little man of light, that's like the exact little picture of, you were that little gingerbread of man of light before you came to earth inside of the father. He literally takes you, he knits you together in your mother's womb. Right, they see that flash of light. Uh, they've actually done the, um, what is it, they set up the little, I don't know, what, what the, how, they, how do they record it, the flash of light at conception. They've actually recorded it oh, yeah. scientifically. I don't know what the machine is called. But they record the flash of light. So when the egg uh, is fertilized by the sperm, there's a flash of light. That's your spirit get coming into your mother's womb from heaven. Yeah. So you existed in the Father, and then he, you know. What's that realm where all spirits come from? The guff. The guff. How many souls? I asked myself this question. I asked, I was like, I wonder how many souls are left in the guff. And that's a mystery. That'll shake some of you up, understanding that concept. It's the truth anyhow. Because once there aren't any more in there, I guess there's not really a need for time anymore. But I think we're going to break time anyway. So it'll be interesting to see if anyone, this is also one of my questions. This is for the angels probably, is, uh, <laughs> can I even talk about this stuff? And <laughs> it's fun. I want to know. I always want, I feel like, you know, e- we're like Enoch sometimes. I want to know about everything. That's what he said to the angel. Is it okay to talk about this? Is it okay to talk? <laughs> Come on, man. I want to know about stuff. You know, if we get, if we break time first and then, you know, are there just those like the blessed souls in the guff that get to come and they're like, I'm going to wait until they do that first. And then they just literally get to live in like heaven on earth and then they're just born in Zion. So that's my, I, that's my personal desire. I hope for that because I don't want anyone else to have to like come into a hell hole. <laughs> Creating a realm of glory for all the spirits. Trying to make it good for you guys in heaven. Guff, the guff of God to live in heaven on earth instead of Esau, yeah. hell on earth under Mount Esau. So, and here's my other question. Do they let them have television into the earth when they're still inside of the guff inside the father? 
Okay, so here's a, okay, let's talk. Just talk, I'm talking about heaven culture because I know some of you have been to heaven. This is I'm. This is what I'm interested in, right? Angelic philosophy. Okay, this is what I'm interested in. I think about stuff like this a lot, and I want to know. <laughs> so if you've been to heaven, you can let me know if you've seen this or not. I haven't seen the specifics on this. I haven't gotten the you know the privilege of seeing that, but I know that everyone who's died and gone back to heaven, they have access to you know the portals. Um, you can watch like you know, the special events for your salvation or birthday or special moment. Uh, like my grandpa, I've seen him twice now. I saw him once when I was consciously awake and through the portal. Uh, at, I, right before he died, this was just a couple years ago, I went to go visit him and see him off. It was like Holy Ghost highlight, you know, go talk to him and just make sure he was all good to go and, you know, just settle some things in his heart. And <laughs> it was so glorious. There was so much glory. It was so fun. And, you know, they're outer court Christians, kind of Baptist, sometimes Lutheran. You know, they try all the different churches. I'm just looking around. And, uh, you know, my grandpa, he was in the Navy. And he would always like being out on the marina when he was retired and driving his boat around. And it was super fun. He'd let me, you know, he would let me drive the boat when I was a kid. So that was fun. <laughs> You've recently seen him in heaven when you were raptured a yeah, couple just days like, ago. Yeah, just a few days ago or something like that. But when, uh, like a week after he died, though, a couple years ago. So basically, when I went to go see him before he died in person, he's on his deathbed basically at home resting. And he would he was starting to fade in and out. And he started prophesying about the angel of the Lord. And no one's even paying attention. They're all just talking in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, da, 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 you know. <laughs> and I'm looking at him. I hold his hand. And he starts talking about the angel of the Lord. I was like, he's prophesying. Does anyone see what's going on? I guess it's just, you know, this is just for me to hear. And he has never done that in his life. So I knew he was getting close. And so I remember. He went to heaven and was finally a prophetic Christian. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So yeah. So right at the end of his life, he started prophesying. And then so I remember right before I left, he was laying in bed. He was conscious. I wanted to say goodbye. Because I knew that was the last time I was going to see him, you know, while he was still alive. And I remember he apologized to me. Something, you know, when you get to the end of your life, you have some people have regrets. So I want to encourage you to live without regrets. <laughs> Any interaction that you have with your spouse or your family or whoever, let it, I want you to think about it like if that's the last time you'll ever see them because you never know. Carpe nocturne. Seize the night, <laughs> children of light. Yeah, so just understand when you're having interactions, when your family members leave the house, don't ever be irritated, angry. Your momentary demon problem you're dealing with isn't more important than them knowing that they're loved or they're cared for. Because if, if that's the last time you see them, you know, you would have a lot of regrets. So just don't live with regrets and don't let demons run your life. Live with love, okay? So anyway, so my grandpa, he had, um, he had some regrets, you know, about like not being around or blah, blah, blah some you know enough but i just i didn't have any i didn't have any negativity i didn't think that way toward him i only had positive memories of just like fun and growing up and going fishing and driving the boat and so i just kind of encouraged him in that and just like you did an amazing job like you're an amazing grandpa and that's i could feel that he's he breathed out and something lifted off of him and i was like all right yeah he's ready he's he'll be good he's good to go he just needed to hear that and i think everyone before they go needs to hear uh, your success something. is the portion of Jesus you've lived through your life. Yeah. So, you know, it was really good. So I could feel like that burden, some burden was lifted off of him. And just know you're like, yeah, you were enough. Like, he, I'll, you know, he was born again. And I know he was like, it, he's a super cool dude. Still is. He's totally just the same cool guy. Like, he's <laughs> it surprises me how much exactly the same he is in heaven. Just like just like a more glorified version he's just like a cool dude and he's chill yep driving the glory train yeah i saw okay so yeah that was cool to see him so when he died and uh after so when he passed away i was out of body it was like a week later i was laying on the couch tranced out and when i came back i felt like i had been there like helping someone go somewhere i didn't i could you know so when you sometimes when you come and go it's kind of hard to remember it until you do it. If you do it a lot consistently, it's easier to remember. Because it's like going through the womb every time you go and come back. And the more you come and go, the clearer it is. But, um, which is interesting because one of our friends, Daniel, 
he met me in the spirit and that's exactly what I explained to him because he was kind of fuzzy when he landed there and I was explaining that to him like it'll clear up here in a second this is how it happens <clears throat> and then I proceeded to tell him things that I had only learned the week prior just from my own readings and so I, I go in the spirit and I teach you guys sometimes some of you know that like well you'll meet me in the spirit and I'll teach you things that I'm actually learning here in the natural because we're not bound by space and time in the spirit so anyway that happened but anyway, I go, when as soon as I come back to my body at that time, about a week or so after my grandpa passed, I get the text from my grandma that my grandpa just passed away. And I was like, I just knew that no one came to me that I was helping him move to heaven. Ooh. So that was pretty cool. And uh, then one of those days there, I was tying on my shoes and getting ready. And I look up and... There was my grandpa in the portal, and that's why we're talking about portals. If people have died and gone to heaven, there's portals, and when they look through them, uh, usually they'll see from about ceiling height down to where if they're getting to look at you or, or an event or something like that, if it's into a house. But before I left my grandpa, when I said goodbye, when we were, I was physically there with him, after that burden lifted off of him, he's getting ready to pass away. I held his hand and I said, Grandpa, when you get there, right, when you get to heaven, as soon as you can, because I know the festivities when you're, like, we'll call you an, your initiation into live, heaven life, it's overwhelming. People are shocked that it's actually real <laughs> and, like, just how <laughs> real it is. It's, it can be overwhelming. It takes some time. But they live outside of time, but it, our earth time kind of passes as that happens. So I told him, when you get there, as soon as you can, as soon as you're able, go to one of the portals and watch to see what we're about to do in the earth. And so there about a week later in earth time, there he was at a portal looking down and I had snuck, I had asked the angels to sneak in a gift into his mansion for him before he got there for a nice captain's hat, you know, because he was in the Navy, a nice captain's hat, real beautiful decorative that says, you know, with love from Rebecca, just to freak him out. So when he gets, oh my gosh, heaven is real. And oh my God, here's my mansion. He got a mansion. He was out of court Christian. He still got a mansion. God is really generous, God. And he goes in there. I just wanted to freak him out. Like, wait, from who? How did you get that in here? <laughs> I thought it would be funny. Just wanted to troll him on his, you know, welcome to heaven. How did you get that in here? Yep, the prayers of the Zadik <laughs> are creative, giving gifts to many. <laughs> Some of you don't know, but portals are in the Bible. Speaking of all these portals. Oh, yeah, portal. You need to hear this. Genesis twenty-eight seventeen in the Passion Translation. This is King Israel speaking from Mount Zion. Terrified and overwhelmed, he said, How awesome is this place? I have stumbled right into the house of Yadivave. This place is a portal, <laughs> the very gate of heaven. It is written. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. So... I look up, I'm tying my shoe that one day, and there's my grandpa standing up there, wearing the hat. Wearing the hat! And I was like, he did wearing find the, the portal. <laughs> and he did find... <laughs> he did find the portal. He got it. He must be... He got used to his life in heaven. And he's having a good time now. I'm so happy for him. And uh, so that was pretty cool. I just, if you got a loved one who's moving to heaven, or they've moved to heaven recently... Go ahead and freak them out. Ask the angels to put, you know, ask the Lord to put a gift in there for them. Uh, you know, if something comes to mind, you think that they would love, talk to the Lord about it. That's a good way to freak them out on their first day in heaven when they make it back to like, and here's your house. Here's where you're going to be living. And what? So, and that happened. So I saw him then. And then, uh, oh, we're talking about portals. Oh, yeah, because this is all started because of my question of, I know everyone who dies and go to heaven gets to see the portals. But before they come to Earth and they're still inside the guff inside the father, do they let them have TV access to what's going on in the Earth, or do they like make them wait until, uh, you know, until he gets ready to send them off and say, you know, there's the send off, which is like, hey, you know, this is going to happen. I think it works about mm -hmm. the desire of the spirit, because it's your yeah. spirit that desires more of God to mature in God. So if you desire those things, you'll pay any price for them, and that's how heaven works. It's based on a currency of faith which is desire for more of god anyway these are the kind of questions i have <laughs> i'd like to know do they let the little baby spirits before they come to 
or have TV in their room. You know, like when you're a little kid and you're like not allowed to have TV in your room. I was like, is it like <laughs> the guff of pre-incarnate <laughs> human spirits? He knew you it's before he knit you out. together in your in your mother's womb. That's right, Jeremiah. A little flashlight. So, anyway, what this has to do with the carnal overcoming the carnal mind is that little light being that you are. You're born again. So now you're like the little gingerbread, just like you were in the guff uh, inside of the father. You don't want to stay little like that. You want to start growing it right away. But what happens is when you're taking in spiritual information, Bible, uh, RLM TV, you're reading whatever, you get into the oral tradition of Moses after you get to Hesed of Messiah because you're not cheating your way and getting into the mountains of Esau and the uncircumcision. You're going to do it right. You're going to do it right the first time. Amen. Because doing it right the first time is actually the fastest way to go and the fastest way to grow. So that's your actual mind. The only mind that can do you any good is that little tiny baby of light down in there. So if you're using this thing, you are starving that little inner child. So you got to grow that thing. And that's where you'll find the renewed mind of Christ. So this thing's wrong. This thing's wrong. Your heart emotions. That's why the tefillin is the binding of the word of God to keep that stuff sealed so the enemy's not using your unrenewed mind and your uncircumcised heart. Grow in your inner man. Get the circumcisions and that's going to renew your heart and your mind, your new heart, your new soul, your seven souls. So that brings us to, let's go ahead and look at the pictures for today because we did promise you guys some multiverse orbitals. I love going on tangents about heaven though, by the way. that's It's so fun. It's so refreshing to think about the things of God. So we're talking about marriage of the realms and Brandon enlightened you a little bit about the menorah lamp and what that is. When you are growing your spirit man, your little baby gingerbread man of light, when you're growing it up, when you place your hand on your spirit and you're engaging in Torah, I want you to see that menorah lamp. That's why you need oil. Oil for what? Oil for light. How is there oil for light? The oil is what fills the menorah. When it's lit on fire, it's by the seven spirits of God. The seven spirits of God, of this he spoke of the Holy Ghost, the river of life within you. It's a river of water. It's a river of fire. It's invisible light. Uncreated light is Christ. Amen. He is God. And if you're born again, he lives within you. If you're not, he wants to live within you. So go ahead and invite him into your heart. If you are not saved, you can ask him now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be the king and the Lord of my life. I want to walk the Sephirot with you. I want to be born again and recreated as a new creature in your likeness, in your image. And I want to walk up 10 worlds on the path of lightning to ascend, to be with you and have you formed in me, to be holy as you are holy, to be perfect as you are perfect, to be refined, to be circumcised, and to live a life that is pleasing to you. Like Enoch was living a life, he walked with you, he was pleasing to you, and you took him. He was not because God took him. But, you know, let the Lord take your life and use your life the way that he seems, that seems fit to him. Amen. So this is the marriage of the realms. Why are we dealing with this above and below? You get a picture here of the Sephiroth. <coughs> and that is the correct arrangement. If you're wondering why, where is the earth? Where is the Malkut sphere? It's that base below the moon there. Well, we're getting rid of the old earth, so we won't be needing that. It's actually going into the cosmic trash can, which is the eternal abyss. But don't worry. Don't freak out. Don't go into a panic and flail your arms around like SpongeBob and Patrick when their panic boat is, ah! What am That's I going right. to do? New heavens recreates yeah. a new earth constantly. You'll need a new earthen vessel to live in the new earth. The new earth cannot sustain the old earthen vessels. You have to be a new creature. Only new creatures can live in the new earth. Otherwise, it's not possible. Uh, so you'll need a new earthen vessel, which means being transformed. The first part of that is being transfigured in your inner man and your spirit, then through all the layers of your soul, and then eventually your body, which 
You can check out that Facebook post, Nativity. We posted on Christmas for your impartation. So yeah, th basically, where's Malkut? You take your Malkut, so your earthen vessel, and you stand on the moon. See where the moon is there? You stand on the moon, get clothed in the sun, and you go through all the Sephirot. Old Earth, tsh, gone. New earthen vessel is going to be you standing on the moon, clothed in the sun. There is no more below the luminary living that's being done away with. So the transition matrix or that transitionary time is time for everyone to decide f finally who they want to serve and if they w and of those who are, will be saved, who's going to just die and go to heaven and then learn what they can there and who is going to be one who remains and finishes the work. Okay. Rainbows are actually full circles but most people only see a semicircle or arc. The reason for this is that the Earth's surface blocks the rest of the light, which is why it appears as a rainbow. Amen. What is in you that is blocking the light of the rainbow? Wow. This was a highlight here. The reason is that the Earth's surface blocks the rest of the light. Wow, isn't that fascinating? Revelation says about Jesus Christ, there was a rainbow round about him. A full circle. No blockage of Earth. Yep, and if you're in an airplane, sometimes you can actually see the full circle. When you lift off of the Earth, you can see a full circle. The When we think rainbow, we think semicircle. Because we only have an earthbound perspective. So what's in you that's blocking the light of the rainbow? Of the earth's surface? Ten worlds of uncircumcision. Dust. Alright. It's time for some reading rainbow so we can get rid of that. <laughs> read in a book. Take a look. Read reading rainbow. rainbow. Amen. So read until you get to see the other half of the rainbow. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> Mock speed ahead, Jordy. Amen. Okay, so there's the other half. Now, I'm going to back up a few pages so you can understand. Well, why is it menorah like there and up there? Why? Okay, do you remember? We looked at this the other day. Do you remember this verse? John... 1 John 5, 7 through 8. So there are three witnesses in heaven. The Father, the Word, that's Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three witnesses on the earth. So if you're on the earth, you need these three witnesses. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are in unison, or they're in agreement. They're, which means their testimony coincides. So above, it's all one, and below, it's in unison. So you need to understand unity, agreement with the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the river of Elijah below, before you walk in union, being one, above, in the above realms with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your first real taste of that is the Yachita. But you're going from below to above, so you can see how this works. All right. Nice. We're going to learn how things work so we can walk in it. Yeah, you like that? Mm, beautiful. I like the flames. <laughs> yeah, there's a mystery. The planetary systems have always ruled over the Earth. Yeah, and they, they correspond to the things above. So everything, including the planets, they're a shadow of the things to come. But they're also, you know, part of the power system. That's why the planets are getting cleansed as we rise. Because, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, or you've talked, maybe you've heard about people who are in the occult, who will get caught up in the occult, like an occultic rapture, onto these pl surfaces of the planets where they actually had demonic altars that are like, you know, built in the invisible realm or left over from, you know, years and years past. When people actually dwelt on the Sephiroth, and that might be 
uh, what do you call it, controversial, but... This is the fulfillment of what is written, tearing down the high places. Exactly. So we can't have any altars of demons. And if you remember, I had a video from a, maybe like a couple years ago, two or three years ago, when I got into Cosmic Righteousness, talking about some of your problem. Some of you have this problem with that your, uh, your soul was bound to different demonic altars on planetary powers because of bewitchment. So we're going to we're taking care of that by rising and cleansing the Sephiroth, but you also need to get out of bewitchment and get into God inside mindedness to cut your ties to demonic altars. Okay? So you need to be made whole. That only happens by knowing Christ within you. Okay. All right. And these and there God made all these planets good. He did not make them for demons to use them with like Jewish magicians like a, a space laser of the enemy but that's what's been happening that's right Genesis says in chapter 1 of Genesis when God created the heavens and the earth and he said it was good it is written he created the stars and he said it is good amen all right so orbitals Enoch 41 astronomical secrets and I saw the chambers of the sun and moon Oh yeah, quick note on uh, these guys. Apostolic versus uh, just cosmic. Here's the difference. When you are doing the cosmic apostolic, so what Brandon and I are doing, because I'm, I have female nefesh, he has male nefesh. You need at least one male and one female to to accomplish this on both sides. The cosmic apostolic of this generation is. We do it on the inside. We get circumcised on the inside of ourselves. And we also cleanse the external Sephiroth. From those foreskins. That's apostolic. The rest of you, all you have to worry about doing is the one inside of you. Because as we ascend and deal with the external one, it is done. Now you just clean the inside of your cups. So... What we're doing is we're circumcising it on the inside of us and we're dealing with the external Sephiroth. Again, as you rise, you only have to worry about doing the internal one. The external one has already gone ahead. Jesus Christ made a perfect lightning path. His pillar is the middle pillar. That's why some of y'all, you like the middle pillar the best. That's because Jesus Christ came as God in the flesh. And so... He's already dealt, and the middle part is done. Yes, he came in male flesh, but he had a different genetics because he did not actually have an earthly father. Brandon is a male in the flesh who had an earthly father, so that checks the box for the right hand side. You know, I'm I'm born with a you know an earthly mother and a father. He has an earthly mother and a father, so you have the male and the female that is required to you know check that box to go up and cleanse it externally, but it only can be done externally if you do it internally. By by the Holy Ghost, you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, consecrated, circumcised. So as we're going up, Christ has already done his part. The middle pillar. That represents God. The left represents female. The right represents male. So as we go up, again, the only thing you're going to have to do is inside of you circumcised and then you can walk in what's already being pioneered ahead of you and so when you see us understand that you cannot compare your walk to the cosmic apostolic pioneers we're not even doing the same thing it's not something that god asked you to do it's something he's asked us to do there's no false burden on you to do that anything that's coming from the enemy that says that you have to do that that's just demonic distraction and you're probably just working in the enemy sephiroth so understand there are those temptations out there. Okay. Enoch 41, Astronomical Secrets. And I saw the chambers of the sun and moon, whence they proceed, and whither they come again, and their glorious return, and how one is superior to the other, and their stately orbit, mm. and how they do not leave their orbit, and they add nothing to their orbit. And they take nothing from it. And they keep faith with each other. I can hear somebody thinking about, well, what about Enoch? He was a man. What about Elijah? 
Listen, they went up in an external old covenant. They were not baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. So this is a permanent change established in the earth from within for all male and female nefesh to be able to walk in it permanently. That's again, that's why God took them into heaven. This is to establish that you can stay in the earth and be transformed. And that's only possible in the new covenant with what Jesus did being infilled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so they do not leave their orbit. So make a note to self, do not leave my orbit, all right? And they add nothing to their orbit, and they take nothing from it, and they keep faith with each other. Any lack of faithfulness in your life is from not keeping your orbit to the throne of God within your spirit. Under the oath by which they are bound together. And first the sun goes forth and traverses his path. This is important. First the sun goes forth and traverses his path according to the commandment of the Lord of Spirits and is, and mighty is his name forever and ever. So we want to break it down into a little bit more of a basic picture. So you can see the orbital paths here. You see the above and below mirrored full rainbow. You saw Tiferet Daat Keter. Okay. We're going to start to understand that top of the center there of the below menorah is Keter, the Achita, the world of Adam Kadwan. Then you have the red rose soul, the ninth world, the pink rose soul, the tenth world. And I, the eleventh world, infinity to infinity and beyond. Wow, the ruling of the cosmos from I, I can see that. It's like you're outside uh, the membrane of the universe, ruling over the universe like God when you're circumcised that high in the Sephirot. Outside of time and space. It's in that dimension that you'll be young at 100. Cause Days it's without count. end. It's, it's like outside of numbers. It's so outside of numbers. There's, um, what is it called? I forget the three S's, I think it's called, like Sephir, text, Sephor. Anyway, one is text, the other is number, and the other is communication. That's the basic... Funct those are the three basic functions of the Sephirot, the Sapphiras. It's called a Sapphira. That's why my name is Zephira, with like a TZ, because it's about making righteousness uh, happen in all the Sephirot. It's about who will become a ladder. My name is literally Zephira. That's becoming the ladder. Why is the whole eighth world and beyond is pink? You understand a pink Chaya? Why is it like that? Somebody's going to get a revelation. God made us a lot uh, greater than you know, but it's not you until you put to death the old life and you live your new life. Your new life is full of great destiny and it's way better than you could possibly imagine, but you cannot apply it to the self nature that has to die so that you can live your new life in Christ, which is an amazing, glorious destiny. So your destiny depends on you killing your old nature through the slaughter of the animal nature by the word of God and obedience to his throne. So yeah, so those three, so inside of that, so the outer circle ruling and reigning over the cosmos, like you saw that picture, inside of there, you know, so God's ruling and reigning over the universe, the multiverse, with text, number, and communication. You see those three in, yeah, so I don't know if he wants to go in there. It's a little bit closed off. So but we'll just put it out there. The seed is there. You can take it and, and run with it. And this is the original. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys this. I thought, why did not we make these nice pictures? Well, when I was originally getting the download, it was because I was having fun watching a cartoon. It was actually the One Piece uh, cartoon. And at one point, they had seven people on the boat. And I knew there was a mystery going on because you know when people are creative and they're in inspired they draw down from above and oftentimes god has secret messages hidden just out in plain sight and i wanted to know which one of the seven you know each soul was i'm like oh wow seven souls on the boat and so i wanted to map it out and so after the show and we did an episode of that and we mapped it out for you guys 
But when I did this, and as soon as I wrote this down, that's literally when I looked up, I was suddenly transported. And I was climbing the red rose lattice. This is when I was in the ninth world. And I looked up and I saw the father looking down over the balcony. Uh, over the balcony to me. And I, looked, and I saw him. And it was like the waters above and below. It was like mirrored. It was so crazy. It was amazing. One of the best moments of my whole life. But so sometimes when we just jot things down, don't worry about how nice your notes look. It literally doesn't matter. And then you know, technology is great. We can always make it easier to understand for others. Okay. But I wanted to have that in here for the impartation. So was, that's when it happened. All right. First orbit. So when you first step into orbit, that's the ninth world. That is your first orbital. So do you remember when you were at the top of Malkut and you got ready to launch? This is like another launch sequence. You launch from Earth to basically Cosmos space. And then you launch from Cosmos basically to... The entry point of the multiverse is like... Whew. Kind of like the, the baseline for that. So you're above... You're above the Sephiroth, like absolute. And then you're getting ready for your orbit. And just as a reminder here, if you remember this picture, the Yachita of the Lamb, Adam Kadmon, that is the singularity of the spirit of Jesus Christ. In absolute, you have a Chaya. It's near to the light, but you still have sapphire stones to stand on that you can't really see his face exactly like that yet. You still see him you know, face to face, kind of in a way. But when you step into being one with him through that portal, it's like that first taste of unity. That potential to be one with him, like a part of you that can be one with him. And then you're going on into Ein Sof or Ein Sof and then the infinite. So as you can see, the Yachita soul in the eighth world of Adam Kadmon is the singularity beyond the primordial point of wisdom, Hakma, Yachita, literally, singularity. According to the SAO and 